the search for knowledge is fueled by curiosity. Curious minds explore and observe the natural world and collect objects and samples to investigate further, dissect to examine their subjects up close. Since its inception 90 years ago, the University of the Witwatersrand has maintained numerous collections housed in different parts of the university, in museums, archives and departmental collections. The Witz Treasures exhibition samples some of the most significant objects and presents them to the new Witz Art Museum. The selection was made on the basis of their importance to our history and cultural identity and because they define significant moments in intellectual discovery to Witz and to the entire world. The Witz Art Museum is host to this uh, exhibition Witz 90, Witz Treasures, which includes a large number of objects from museums and collections across campus. Uh, each curator was asked to contribute objects and we have a vast variety of different kinds of objects that are considered to be treasures in one way or another. It was a very interesting exercise to put it together because it raised a large number of issues that uh, are issues that we should be debating around uh, what constitutes treasures, how we understand the value of objects and the ways in which we conserve and preserve those objects. One of, the great, of our great treasures at Witz is a book called the Nuremberg Chronicle. It is a list of events from Adam till to the year before it was published in 1493. Why, what, what part of its importance is that in our history is that the, 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 and why it's of, regarded as Africana is because Nuremberg helped fund a Portuguese expedition around, around Africa. So, but it's really well known for its illustrations. It was for many years one of the most profusely illustrated books in existence. There are about 18,000 illustrations, but they produced these by using only, they only had about 645 blocks. The large variety of these treasures invites debate and inspires further exploration beyond the boundaries of individual disciplines, creating opportunities for collaboration. On display we've got uh, two sets from Adolf Ziegler, who's world famous for his wax models. Um, the one is a set of chicken embryos showing the development of the chicken embryo and the other is a set of a limpet. And when you look at them you think they're actually plastic but when you realise that they're made of wax you realise what fantastic objects they are and what treasures they are. Witz is a world leader in exploring evolution. And the treasures include the rich legacy of fossilised remains of a number of ancient beings who walked this part of the earth in the distant past. In terms of the treasures um, from the fossil record, we have chosen a number of fossils that span uh, basically the entire uh, existence of life on Earth, ranging from the Cambrian around 400 million years ago, where we've got some fossil ferns, moving on to the Permian, where we've got a uh, mammal-like reptile, uh, we have fossilized dinosaur eggs from the Jurassic period, that's around 190 million years ago. And then what people are particularly interested in uh, are the human origins, early hominin, the famous Taung child, the very first early hominin ever found, and then the world's most recent hominin, Australopithecus sediba, which uh, uh, is aged at uh, around 2 million years. Also included are letters and notes from intellectuals who pursued freedom, whose writings and thoughts evoke a humanity that is universal. Um, the Mandela handwritten notes from the Ravonia trial are extraordinary and Witz is very lucky to have them. Um, they were rescued by one of Mandela's lawyers after the Ravonia trial he left South Africa and went to the Great Britain and then brought them back after 1990. Um, essentially, the, you know, it's the way he conceptualised what he was going to say in his own trial. And you know, the very famous statement, it's an ideal for which I'm prepared to die, it's actually how he conceptualised it. And what makes that piece of paper really interesting is that George Bezos says the part that was scratched out, he told Medeva to scratch it out and that's why it reads so perfectly. Um, but it's a really fabulous collection and obviously irreplaceable and you can't even put a value on it. 
Um, the Sol Plaiki Diary of the Siege of Mafeking is also an exceptional item. It was also outside of the country for decades um, and then came back and was given to Witz um, into our custody. Obviously, Witz doesn't really own any of these things, we're just custodians. But um, that diary is the only account by a black person of, you know, a very important encounter and, you know, the South African War. So um, it's very, very, very special. Um, then obviously there's Robert Sabuqua's letters. Um, they came to us through Benjamin Pogrand. Um, so a lot of the letters were written to Benji, but they're also letters to his family while he was on Robben Island, but also afterwards when he was moved to Kimberley when he was put under house arrest. Some of the objects have a spiritual significance. San Rockart is a tremendously rich cultural artifact and a very useful resource for, that enables archaeologists to get inside the minds of the now largely extinct southern San. These are not images of everyday life or of storytelling. These are private visions that individual healers and game shamans, rainmakers had of the spirit world the world beyond the rock face that they then fixed onto that rock face in paint for others to see. We've got a printing from 1578 of the, of the Bishop's Bible, but this Bible is also known popularly as the Breacher's Bible. Why it was called the, the Breacher's Bible was because they translated the section where Adam and Eve make uh, garments for them because they realize they're naked. It says they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves breeches out of the fig leaves. It is our responsibility really for future generations to make sure that these objects are cared for and that they are available to public view. So this in a sense is a, an, an initial attempt to bring all these objects together and to show the enormous riches that Vitz has. The treasures represent evidence, case studies, points of debate and are at the very root of the kind of critical inquiry which happens in a university environment. And this exhibition invites the public to accompany some of our most accomplished minds on journeys of discovery.